and from the 80s and this is the survivable uh, Trojan horse of Ken Thompson in 84, 25 years ago. He described it in his Turing Award lecture. Uh, what, what he designed is effectively a survivable password snatching uh, Trojan horse. So, uh, password snatcher is some, uh, a program that tries to uh, to infect the the Unix uh, password program or file and, and and to log passwords. And the design goal of uh, to show how uh, systems are getting complex and threats are getting serious. Uh, he designed a Trojan horse that uh, survived recompilation and reinstallation of the password program on the host machine. So he demonstrated that it's not just the application itself that needs to be uh, protected. And uh, I have the description here, but I will skip it. But I'll get to the bottom line. The bottom line was that uh, essentially, the Trojan was using the C compiler to increase its survivability. And then if you replace the C compiler or the password program, just the smart operation of this Trojan made it survive and, and re-replicate inside the system. And uh, and uh, the bottom line of this was what he showed is that one cannot just scrutinize the trustworthiness of a program by analyzing the source code and by compiling it. And in some sense, the entire machine must be scrutinized because he used something that was hiding in the compiler. So the source code, the compiler, linker, assembler, operating system that you cannot, when the threat come from one source, you cannot just go there. It really is spread, spread around. Uh, the academic uh, studies um, by uh, Cohen in his uh, PhD thesis in the 80s uh, he started to investigate uh, viral countermeasures and, uh, and bypass, bypass, bypassing these countermeasures. So what he noted is that uh, the idea that the virus can have, uh, can change itself in the replication process. And uh, he produced uh, something uh, that uh, viruses that has no common sequence of over three bytes between each generation. And he called it evolutionary viruses. And uh, nowadays, you know, we know about polymorphic viruses. Uh, also in the 80s, it was shown that the problem of whether a program uh, or a set of programs has a virus or doesn't have a virus uh, is undecidable. The meaning is that there is no universal treatment and at the same time the antivirus heuristics uh, based on uh, scanning and signatures uh, started to be uh, developed. Another uh, something that happened in the, in the 80s is worms were uh, invented as a paradigm for distributed computing. In, in, in Xerox Park, among uh, other innovations. And uh, as I said, polymorphic viruses are now uh, known threats and, and they usually, they employ uh, cryptography to begin with. I'm not getting into uh, the detail, but there is a, there is a decryption header that decrypts the program, the program can execute when there is a replication, the, the decryption can be done with another key, so you can see how uh, just uh, crypto, cryptography can uh, generate many, many 
uh, viewpoint of, of uh, the same uh, encrypted uh, piece of software. So this was already something that existed as an application of uh, cryptography to malware when we started. So, uh, you know, you can do many changes and it's easy to exponentially explode the space of uh, possible viruses and uh, as was noticed in the early 90s. And the other piece, so, so this was the state of the art when we started. The other piece of the, of the picture that uh, we wanted to include in our technology is public key cryptography. And for the sake of this presentation, I'm not going to give a lot about public key uh, cryptography, but all you have to know is that uh, there is a public key denoted uh, Y there, and it has a corresponding secret key X. X is kept by the key owner. Everybody can encrypt E of Y and the message, get the cipher text CI. Everybody can decrypt it. But the knowledge of Y and the knowledge of uh, does not enable to the decryption of the cipher text back to the message. Only the one who knows X, this called trapdoor information, can take the ciphertext and the secret key X, apply a transformation denoted D, and which is the reverse operation to the encryption, and gets the message back. So this is the, this is, was the idea of Diffie and Elman in the late 70s, and the first uh, example of, of it was the RSA, which was based on, on uh, factoring big numbers, that there is a number n that is multiple of p and q, two big numbers, and you cannot uh, factor them. You cannot factor, you can, cannot take e roots, e root. Therefore, you can take a message and raise it to the e mod n. Only if you can factor, you can recover m. And applications for, for this is encryption, key exchange, digital signatures, and various protocols that w have been suggested in, in the last uh, 30 years, like playing poker over the phone. Okay. So now, we're going to get to, to the subject of uh, cryptovirology. And I will review uh, three topics. The first one is cryptoviral extortion. This is an active attack. Uh, the second subject that I will cover will be deniable password uh, snatching, which is a pass pass passive attack where the combination of cryptographic technology and other available uh, modern uh, channels that are available in the, in the infrastructure enables us to uh, provide the attacker with uh, deniability of being identified. And the third topic that I will just mention is computationally secure information stealing. Kind of uh, a virus that you know the virus, you have all the traces of the operation, and still you don't know what the virus was stealing. Okay? So this, these are the types, types of things that you can do when you start uh, combining the, these technologies, this public key, technolo public key cryptography on the one hand, and viruses on the other. So, well, wow, 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 how can such research be justified? But I don't think this is the right conference that I need. I mean, this, I should have erased this, uh, this slide. Everybody understand. You have to hack system, you have to break system, you have to think about threats. And this will help society. If you get the right cooperation. And I'll talk about it later. So let's, let's go directly.